How about we animate that? Hi, and welcome to How About We Animate That, a brand new series from Paganimation. Uh, I'm David Pagano, and I love stop-motion animation. Uh, I've done it my whole life. Uh, when I was a kid, I would find random objects around my house, you know, toys and slippers and pots and pans and all kinds of stuff, uh, and I would use stop-motion to bring them to life and make them into little characters. And now that I'm an adult, when I see things at the store or a friend's house, I'll see something on a shelf and I'll think to myself, huh, I wonder if I could animate that. And so that's what this series will be about. It will be continuing the tradition of my attempts to stop motion animate anything and everything. Today I'm going to be animating these. These are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mega Constructs figures. And what's neat about them is that they both have two kind of alternate modes. There's like a human and a mutant mode. Uh, so my thought was that I could animate them turning from human to mutant, person to animal. Uh, so we've got Baxter Stockman, the uh, scientist fly, and Rocksteady, the mutant punk rhinoceros, <laughs> as we knew him. Well, how about we animate that? So here's our starting point for human Rocksteady. And uh, I've just got him kind of standing at a three-quarter angle. I think what he's going to do is sort of react to the fact that he's transforming. Maybe look like he's like weirded out by the fact that this is happening. Uh, and then the, the transformation will begin. All right, so I'm about 20 frames into this animation of Rocksteady's transformation. I'm shooting at 12 frames per second, just so this doesn't take forever. Um, but right now what's happening is he's doubled over kind of in pain, and then he'll sort of like burst out of it and become the uh, rhinoceros form. I almost keep saying Warthog, that's Bebop. Don't send me letters. So the trickiest part of any transformation animation, besides saying that phrase, is uh, the in-betweens to get from one form to the other. So there's two main things I have to deal with here. One is the switch from human to rhino, and kind of what I'm doing is using the rhinoceros head and this first big movement after he hunches over to kind of hide the fact that the head changes just straight from human to rhino. The other part of this I have to hide is the, the jacket removal. Um, so as he transforms, he kind of like takes his vest off and it's, it's a little bit of a cheat. There's just, there's a frame where the vest is on and then it's kind of halfway off. And you can see right here, I actually put the sleeves of the human form arms behind to kind of look like the sleeves are tearing off of his yellow shirt. And then the next frame, vest is off and sleeves are gone because magic. <laughs> and uh, you can also see that I've got the vest floating on like a gray one by one behind there just to kind of help it blend in. And frame after that, vest is on the ground. Finished animating Rocksteady, let's move on to noted scientist, Dr. Baxter Stockman. I was a little skeptical at first when I opened this package because I was like, wait, are these wings for Baxter Stockman just cardboard? These wings are just paper, that's a little disappointing. But it turns out he actually has his own plastic wings that are kind of like a transparent, thin plastic. Ironically, <laughs> I think these white wings are the ones I'm going to use, these cardboard cheapo wings, because even though they're for display only, I think they're going to show up a lot better against the purple background than these clear ones will. Alright, so I'm about halfway through this shot. He actually came with a, a bottle, like a little like uh, flask from like a science lab. So I had him drink the bottle and kind of smash it on the ground. And now because he's turning into a fly, I'm going to do it a little bit different than I did with uh, the other guy turning into a rhinoceros. I think I'm gonna have him kind of like get a little bit jittery in like a fly or insect sort of way and then, I don't know, maybe the wings will grow first or the arms will come out. Just like with Rocksteady, I'm doing some in-between replacement animation tricks. In this case, when his bottle hits the ground, so there it's the bottle, there it's still the bottle, and you can see some blue tack there holding it at an angle. And then immediately I changed it to a couple of one by one round pieces and a little bar that are the same color so that it looks like the bottle breaks when it hits the ground. It's subtle, but it makes me happy. <laughs> uh, 
I also wanted to get rid of the coat that falls off of him. So I made this little piece that looks like a white blob, I guess, but it's supposed to be like a, a pile of cloth. It's actually two of the claws and a piece of the Pokeball from one of the uh, Pokemon, uh, the Charizard set. Anyway, let me wrap up animation here and let's see what we got. Animation is complete and uh, overall I'd say this was a success. They're pretty fun to animate. The first shot I did was of Rocksteady and he was probably the most straightforward to animate because he's just a normal humanoid, two arms, two legs and a head. Uh, not a lot of stuff to deal with. Uh, he does have a lot of little tiny um, accessories kind of on his belt, but I just sort of ignored most of them. For Rocksteady, uh, his, his transformation scene, uh, I kind of thought of it kind of like the Incredible Hulk, like he's hulking out into this rhino. Whereas Baxter Stockman, it was a little bit more Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, where he drinks a potion and then becomes this fly man. I had to actually break up his animation just because sometimes with stop motion, you'll start animating something and you'll get halfway through and <laughs> the animation will almost tell you that you need to go in a different direction. So I started animating him kind of with the same intention that I had with Rocksteady where I was like, oh, I'll just have him do like one big performance move and that'll get him from human to animal. The way that I ended up animating his wings popping out, something about the animation just felt like it needed to stop here. And so I listened to that instinct and had him stop and then he does kind of like another little extra move where his secondary arms pop out and his head becomes the the insectoid head. Animating these characters, I tried to keep everything pretty simple. Having the characters stand in one place, you need to have one stud of space in between both legs, which makes it a little bit awkward of a stance. Uh, so I tried to counter that by having them kind of bend at the waist a lot. The only thing that really gave me a little bit of a hard time was all the clothing for these characters is like a rubbery kind of material. They're all solid plastic, but their clothing is molded rubber that it can kind of hold a shape, like you can turn it inside out. And I tried to do that where in the frames where it was kind of falling off of his body, but to animate it and hold it in place on the character was actually pretty difficult. Speaking of which, it was more difficult with uh, Baxter Stockman's lab coat. The, the lab coat on him just would not stay in place and kind of would move even when I didn't want it to. He is a little bit more complicated of a character. He's got extra arms and when I was in the middle of the transformation from human to fly, for a single frame, I had the wings upside down so that it looked like they were kind of coming up. And then on the next frame, I turned them over. That's a, a quick way to kind of add a little bit of motion where there's not really any hinge or joint in the toy. But one of the best things about having characters that are really poseable and articulated is that it makes it really easy to act with them. The performances of the characters become really fun. So those are the Mega Constructs Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures, and uh, special thanks to Carrie and Emily at Mega Brands for sending these our way. If you'd like to see me animate something specific, you can leave a comment on this video or use our contact page at paganomation.com. And we'll see you next time for another How About We Animate That.